question is, the next question really is, so why does it decline? Because we, we, we know it's going down. Um, so when we say, um, so it's when AD is declining as we, as we kind of get older. So what, so this could be because we're making less of it, or it could be because we're consuming more of it. Um, I mean, at a high level, where do you see who? Where do you see that? Do we see which which is the major cause of the decline? Yeah, so that's um, the major question that I set out to study during my postdoctoral studies with Eric mm -hmm. Burden. Um, so, yeah, as you mentioned, there's different reasons why any any levels may decline. Um, one is that. Um, you just have greater demand for NAD as we get older. For example, we have more DNA damage that occurs and you need NAD to repair that DNA damage. Um, the other um, reason it may decline as well is you, get, you have some um, kind of problems with the biosynthetic pathways that are um, either making NAD or salvaging um, the byproducts of NAD consumption. Um, so that was something that um, I was interested in exploring as my postdoctoral studies. And as I mentioned, um, one of my... Um, areas of investigation I'm really interested in is looking at the role of inflammation as a driver of disease. And that was my hypothesis that there may be some link to inflammation in this process. Um, given that we know that the aging process is associated with uh, uh, a process called inflammation, mm. which is the accumulation um, or a gradual increase of, of, of chronic low-grade inflammation um, that, that it kind of builds up as we age. Yes. So, so one thing you said that DNA DNA repair requirements go up as we age. Um, so why do we know why that is? Is it yeah? Do we know why that is? Um, well, it's, it's kind of a um, it's thought that as we age, you just have more and more um, just natural um, um, DNA damage that occurs as a result of um, different stresses mm. or. or um, or lifestyle, for example, if you're smoking or drinking, you have more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's just an example. There's other stresses as well, um, this, which may lead to DNA damage. And also this, um, of course, exposure to, um, for example, UV radiation. Um, so you just gradually accumulate more DNA damage. So that's kind of been a hypothesis in the field that one of the major NAD sinks in aging is just the DNA repair mechanisms that are kind of um, accumulating during the aging process. And this requires more PARP activation to repair DNA damage and PARPs are NAD dependent um, enzymes. Um, however, there's actually a really interesting breakthrough in regards to um, what may be a, another NAD sink or an enzyme involved in chewing up NAD as we age. And that was um, work done by Eduardo Cheney's lab at the Mayo Clinic. And they did a really nice study where they really investigated um, longitudinally the expression of different NAD consuming enzymes in mice um, age all the way from two months, which is really young mouse, to the maximal lifespan on a mouse, mm -hmm. so around three years of age. And what they did in this study from about, I think it's almost five years ago, is they, they took lots of different tissues from these aging mice and then measured um, by Western blot the gene expression patterns of all these different NAD consuming enzymes. And the, one, the only enzyme that really emerged as a potential um, NAD consuming enzyme that increases with um, chronology with age was another enzyme called CD38. Um, mm. And they did a really elegant study to uh, where they actually aged CD38 knockout mice with um, wild time mice and then measured NAD during the, the lifespan of these two mice. And what they found was actually really remarkable in that the wild time mice and all the different tissues that looked at the NAD levels declined gradually, as I mentioned earlier. But if you look at the NAD levels in tissues from CD38 knockout mice, these mice were almost fully protected where the NAD levels just stayed really high uh, from the beginning of their life all the way to the end. And what this paper really suggested or this study suggested is that CD38 really may, may be the major consumer of NAD during the aging process and, and not so much PARPs as we had expected. Hmm. Right. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. And I would like to get back to uh, CD38 in a second. Um, so, but there are some others. I, I believe Psalm 1 is also a, a consumer of NAD, which, which uh, d does that expression also grow with age? Yeah, so um, there's, there's been studies to try to determine, um, at least in, for example, in 
if you're just growing normal cells, um, cell lines in your laboratory to determine what um, enzymes are consuming NAD. Um, and within normal cells, it seems that um, in, under normal biological conditions, it seems that PARPs consume about 30% of NAD. Um, and the sirtuin family of enzymes, which is another uh, major NAD um, consuming enzyme, uh, consumes about the other 30%. Whereas, um, and, and the rest are probably um, you know, other cell types, or, sorry, other enzymes hmm. or, or processes that are consuming NAD. Wait, so POPs are 30% and sirtuins are 30%. Um, but a, a lot of these studies were done in cells that don't express CD38. Ah, <laughs> so, so okay. that's, um, so it's not that in absence of CD38, um, PARPs and sirtuins are consuming upwards of two thirds of NAD in a normal cell. In, okay, in a right. So one of the major ways that um, NAD gets recovered, the, the NAD levels retain the same, because I believe that, you know, in terms of the NAD that we have in our cells that's available, the majority of it is actually salvaged through the, the salvage pathway. Um, and so does the salvage pathway lose some of its effectiveness as we get older? And, and would like trying to improve the salvage pathway maybe be a way to, uh, to help reduce the reduction? Um, yeah, so that's correct. Um, so, um, so I'm going to say first and foremost, the NAD um, is a very complicated molecule to study. So mm -hmm. these are these all these questions are really at the leading edge of the field. So oh. we're really trying to um, understand um, how different organs and tissues are, um, and what biosynthetic pathways are making or, or leading to um, NAD uh, production in, in different tissues. Um, so as I mentioned, there is um, really nice um, studies from Joshua Rabinowitz's lab, who's really, um, I would say, at the forefront of, of these questions. And what they found in a recent paper from um, that lab is um, that it seems that the liver seems to be a central hub of NAD metabolism, uh, particularly mm -hmm. the biosynthetic pathways that make NAD. Um, so the liver can um, use different dietary sources um, or precursors, we call, um, such as um, vitamin, um, such as um, the amino acid tryptophan, as well as other um, NAD precursors, such as NMN and NR, um, to synthesize NAD um, in the liver. And then what happens is once the NAD is made in the liver, it gets actually broken down into other molecules, such as nicotinamide, which can then get secreted out of the liver. And then the nicotinamide is what gets taken up by the other organs in the periphery. And, and really that's um, how, that's the, the main, um, um, NAD precursor that get um, that leads to NAD in these tissues, um, and as you mentioned, um, nicotinamide gets converted to NAD in these tissues by a pathway we call the NAD salvage pathway. So that's why um, the salvage pathway is, is actually really important um, for regulating NAD levels within our body. Mm. Um, and and there has been some work um, suggesting that um, indeed the enzymes involved in the salvage pathway do become um, either downregulated or less effective during the aging process. So there, there is some work being done to um, try to use small molecules that can activate um, one of the enzymes called NAMPT. Um, so that way um, the salvage pathway becomes more effective during the aging process and you can help convert a lot more um, this nicotinamide to NAD in peripheral tissues. Right, yes, that would be interesting. So if you take uh, nicotinamide, the concern is that that is, that is the result of um, some of the, like the sirtuins, when the sirtuins act, act, they turn NAD into nicotinamide. And, and so by having too much nicotinamide, you're going to inhibit the certs. And so, uh, yeah, having a way of more quickly turning that nicotinamide into NAD would, uh, I guess, deplete that pool and make that process more effective. Yeah, so we know that nicotinamide at really high levels can inhibit sirtuin function. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure if it reaches high enough levels in vivo to actually suppress sirtuin function within our cells. Um, hmm. So, yeah, that, that would be one concern. Um, that, that would, okay. That, that, that would be interesting. Because um, yeah, that, that is the, the concern with, with kind of with, with nicotinamide directly, or one of the concerns. I hope that you found the video informative please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. 
it encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.